Hello, I'm John Harrington. I lead business development for HiBite, an industrial software company. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to use the HiBite Intelligence Hub to streamline your industrial data integrations. The HiBite Intelligence Hub is a data hub for industrial data. What's unique about the Intelligence Hub is that it allows you to curate and structure your data for specific use cases as it passes through the system on its way to the target systems. The Intelligence Hub is specifically focused on working with industrial data at scale and in a maintainable solution. For this demonstration, we'll pull together multiple pieces of information for analyzing the heating of a room by pulling information from the thermostat and other systems. Let's get started. We establish connections to all the various systems that we need to either pull data from as sources of data or push data into targets for data. I'm going to start out by connecting into my OPC server. This is where we're going to pull the data points for our thermostat. First thing we do is we go into our inputs and we browse to pull in our data points. Here I can browse my OPC server, identify all the data types that I need, and easily import them into the Intelligence Hub. Now that I've brought them in, I can come into modeling. In modeling, we first define our standard models, and then we apply them as instances. Here you can see my thermostat, which just has a series of attributes and the definitions of those attributes. I'll create an instance from here and give it a unique name. Now I can bind my data inputs to my model attributes via the expression field. So I can either double click or just drag them in. Now we call this the expression field because it's not just for binding your inputs, but you can also run expressions on the data. Here I can convert a value from Celsius to Fahrenheit just by simply typing in the mathematical expression. But it's not fixed to mathematical expressions. You can also put in uh, data expressions or you can put in logic expressions. By data expressions, I mean you can convert data from one uh, value to, from one data type to the next. We can take hex values and convert them to decimal. We can um, take numeric values and convert them to text values. We can also run any sort of logic that you need on that data. Now that I've got my data points in there, I can also add additional information as metadata that I just want to type in. So this could be static information that you may not have in, a, in your OPC server. Now that I've filled out my instance, I can submit this and then create a flow. It's already selected my source instance, and then I can just tell it where I want this to go. In this case, I'm going to send it to my MQTT broker as I've already established an analytic that's pulling data from my broker. We'll enable it and now we've got data flowing. If I pull up my MQTT um, client, MQTTFX, I can quickly connect in and see the data that's flowing from my from HiBite. So now you can see I was able to pull in those four data tags, map them into my standard model, and then send them out with some additional contextual information that went with the packet. If I was to click on and look at some of the other thermostats, you'll also see the exact same structure. This makes it very easy to run it through analytics and to compare across like machines or equipment. I just showed you a really simple example where I pull in data from the OPC server and then run it through. But let's add a little bit more complexity to that. 
Let's say we've got an asset log in a SQL database. When we define the SQL database inputs, they're actually queries, not just uh, data tags like you saw in OPC. And with the query, we can actually see what the values are to see to validate that our query was written properly. We can also see the structure of the database. So if I come back into my model, and I'll just go again through uh, starting in the model and then jump into the, the instance, I can swap out, for instance, this static value of 1006 with information from my SQL database. Again, I can open up the thermostat and then I can pull out things like my asset ID. Or I could say something like um, the operator name. And then we can drop in the operator's name field. Now if I save this and we jump back into our MQTTFX, we can see how we've updated the object and now we've got more information and information from, our, from other systems. Now the next thing I want to show is how we can actually make changes to the model. So if I come back into my thermostat control model, you see that I only had a series of attributes. They were all at that same level. We can also add a submodel to an existing model so you can nest your models as you need it. In this case, I want to bring in some local weather. Now to bring, bring in the local weather, first I'll spell local right. we have to select the drop down and instead of selecting a primitive data type we're going to jump down to our weather station so I've already built a model for my weather station but now I've just assembled it into my parent model of the thermostat so when I do this you'll be able to see all the different attributes defined for the weather station From here I can jump back into my instance and we can, we can connect in one of our local weather stations. Well I've already defined a weather station for one of my other uh, devices for my Portland weather which, which is where I live. So by doing that I can reuse that instance and I don't have to define it again and again and again. And when I hit save, we can come back into our, our broker and take a look at this data. And we'll see that now we've got a multi-structured model that we're able to send out. We're pulling in not only data from our OPC server, but we've got data from our asset log in SQL. And then we're also pulling it in from a REST service. Now in this case, we're, we're sending the exact same packet every time, and we're sending it at a static rate. I can jump back into my flow, and then we can see how we can make changes to that. In some cases, you want to analyze something on a very cyclic rate, because it makes it much easier to trend or to analyze the data. In other cases, you may not need the data that frequently. You may only want to see when it changes. So it's very easy to, for instance, switch it to on change. And then we can select from our OPC server our temperature tag. This way, we'll only be publishing the data when the temperature actually changes. There's lots of capabilities within the Intelligence Hub to change the way that the data is structured and to change the way the frequency that it's sent and how it's sent. You can set your flow to trigger off expressions. For instance, when the machine is operating or 
to send an alert when the machine goes over a certain temperature. Similarly, if you are sending it to a time series database, we can make changes to the publish mode and only send the compressed values. That way it only sends the values that actually change with each packet. So the Hybrid Intelligence Hub makes it very easy to curate your data and prepare it for the systems that it's going to. You establish the connections, define your models, and execute your flows. With that, I want to thank you all for listening to this demonstration, and I hope you have a great day.